Hello Year 8. I hope you are all uh, well. This is now lesson 3 of our topic on water supply. So today we're going to look at how can water supply be increased. So first thing I want a nice simple little task for you to get started. What I want you to do is to think about the eight different tasks on, on the page. Um, so you've got everything from taking a shower for five minutes, taking a bath, flushing the toilet, uh, washing your dishes by hand, using a dishwasher, using a washing machine, watering the garden for 15 minutes and washing the car. You've then got down the side, you've got eight, I have done one for you, but you've got, so you've got seven left to do, different amounts of water. Obviously they're all in litres, so you've got 300 litres, 500 litres, 50 metres, 250 litres, 80 metres, 23 litres and 40 litres. You need to then decide which one you think is obviously the most, so which ones are 500 and then 300, 250, the 100 is done for you, 80, 50, 40 and 23. So you need to decide which you think of the, of the activities use the most water. You can just drag and drop them across, so you'll obviously have to finish the, the PowerPoint presentation and sort of close the PowerPoint presentation and then you can drag them across uh, and see uh, what you think which activity has the most uses the most water once you've done that goes to the next slide and we can go through the answers so here are the answers um, you can see on there that washing the car actually uses the most water followed by the bath at 300 then we've got our water in the garden 250 liters and the shower which was the one that was done for you at 100 then 80 liters of the washing machine 50 liters flushing the toilet five times what that is so it's 10 liters per flush uh, 40 litres for our dishwasher and 23 litres for our washing my hands. So you can see the least is washing our hands. Now what I want you to do as we do at the start of most lessons is have a go at our do now task. Um, so there are six questions. All of them are based on the stuff we've done over the last two lessons. Okay, so it should be stuff that you do know or you, we have talked about over the last two weeks. So have a go, give yourself about four or five minutes. So you need to pause the um, presentation now and have a go at filling them and you can write them straight into the onto the PowerPoint in the space provided. Once you've done that, obviously go over to the next slide and you can green pen your answers. Okay, so now you need to green pen your do nows. Uh, so we talked about infrastructure, which from last lesson when we talked about the networks uh, of base equipment. In, in this case, we talked about water pipes being the, in the infrastructure for people to allow people to get water. One of our physical, so remember physical means natural factors that affects water would be either our climates, the amount of rainfall we get, or the temperature of, of the area, or the geology, the type of rocks. Remember we talked about permeable and impermeable rocks would affect the amount of water. Uh, over extraction is when obviously we take out too much water. Remember that over being more than an extraction being taking something out. So in this case, what over extraction of water is when we take too much water out of those aquifers and it's not replaced. Therefore, the water level, the groundwater level slowly um, falls, which means there's less and less water available. Question four asks about poverty. And obviously, we talked about last lesson the idea that poverty affects whether people can afford infrastructure and the technology to have access to that water and obviously that means that, that without clean uh, drinking water and access to enough water that they can become ill. Um, we talked then the first lesson we talked about this I the idea between water insecurity and water security. Remember insecurity is when there's not enough uh, available uh, clean water so obviously that's not in they can't have good health and, and a good and a good livelihood uh, for the population and the term which where the water supply is greater than demand is where we've got surplus so where we've got more water I don't more yeah more water uh, than actually is needed and obviously that's the opposite from water deficit so if we go back to our roadmap which we've been using for the first uh, two lessons so th this is lesson three so we're going to look at how can water supply be increased. So we're going to look at different ways in which we can actually increase the amount of water that's actually within an area. So if maybe there's an area that's 
got a deficit of water how can we actually um, increase the amount of water there so that we actually have more water security uh, and we have enough water to provide for all of the population that live in that area so first thing we need to do is look at three um, keywords from the definitions here we're going to talk about say desalinization which is a sim nice simple process which is the process of removing the salt from seawater and making it safe to drink so that's desalinization so if you go through these read through them a couple of times practice them even do a bit of um, read cover and, and either write or just say them out loud so a little bit practice reservoirs reservoirs are artificial lakes man-made lakes um, often in this case we're talking about the ones that are stored behind dams so dams that obviously store big huge areas of artificial water behind them and we're going to talk about transnational corporations or often known as we refer to as tnc's and these are companies that operate uh, in more than one country so in other words they have maybe factories in one country offices in another country shops in a many different countries so examples you could talk about lots of tnc's that you'll be familiar with so mcdonald's or costa okay all those big companies nike um, adidas they're all tnc's they operate in many different countries either with factories or offices or shops or um, sort of planning or manufacturing places so before you move on make sure that you you understand that these three terms because these are going to be quite important as we go through uh, today's lesson uh, and we'll, we'll use them a number of times okay first thing i want you to do is i want you to log on to the gcse pod um, you will need to log on before you click the link so otherwise it, you'll have to come back and click the link again i want you to watch the gcse pod which is entitled meeting the demand for, for water it's five minutes 29 minutes long okay so what while you're doing that i do want you to um make notes and there's space in two slides time for you to make notes on the powerpoint so there's a table for you to fill in if you don't for any reason if you can't get onto gc pod or you're really struggling then if you go on to the next slide then there's um basically sort of some text that you can read through and use that to make notes rather than watching gc but hopefully you can get on the gcc pod because that will give you a lot more visual stuff that you can see exactly what each of the ways that we that, that, that they're suggesting we can use to increase the amount of water in an area so here's the text if, if you haven't been able to get onto the gcse pod so this is talking about strategies to increase our water supply uh, obviously you need to read through it um, carefully you need to make notes on the next slide so with the three strategies they're, they're referring to here is the dams and reservoirs remember we talked about that that word reservoirs as a key term as that artificial lake stored that, that's where water stored behind the dam and it gives you an example um, of, of uh, dams that have been used across Africa then tr water transfer is our second strategy where water can be basically moved from one area to another usually from an area where we've got a surplus of water where there's more water to an area where there's a shortage of water um, and this is obviously done by pipes and again you can see as an example at the end there of Las Vegas where water is transferred um, to Las Vegas because there isn't enough water in the Nevada desert to support the city and desalinization plants again we use that word in our key terms the desalination where they're taking the salt out of out of the seawater to make it drinkable and again you can see as an example this time in the UK where they're, they're removing the water from from the um, mouth of the river thames which obviously is tidal so you get seawater in there and they are taking that salt water out in order to provide extra water for the city of london so read through this carefully and on the next slide there is space for you to make notes so this is your note table what, what i want you to do is i want you to fill in um, your notes about the three different strategies um, that either gcc pod or the information on the previous page has told you about what you need to include is what is it so what is desalinization okay how does it work what are the advantages of it are there any disadvantages are there any problems or negatives with it and is there a sort of an example that you give so you will need to stop the presentation obviously and go and fill in the three sections it's important that you do this okay um, 
of it, other, otherwise you will struggle to do the next part. One of the examples that it talked about, okay, was um, in India, so an area that struggles with water and, one of the, and some of the problems. So they've looked, talked about Coca-Cola opening a number of factories across India. So what I want to do, just a little introduction to this uh, case study. Uh, so Coca-Cola is our TNC, our Transnational Corporation. So again, that goes back to our key terms that we, that we defined right at the start of the lesson. So that's our Transnational Corporation, or our TNC is Coca-Cola. So what I do is just have three nice simple questions to have a, have a use the map, and it'll get us thinking about what is uh, what Coca-Cola is doing in India. Again, you'll probably need to pause the presentation while, while you fill in uh, the answers, and then go on to the next page so you're ready to green pen your answers. Okay. So you should now be ready to green pen your answers. You can actually see there are 12 um, different uh, Coca-Cola factories being opened. There is one, there is four at the top there, right up in the north. So that one hiding below the, the top one. So if you've got 11, it's because you've missed that one that's hiding underneath. Um, when we ask, when a question asks you to describe the main locations, obviously it's quite difficult this map because they're really spread out. So we're trying to pick out sort of key features of that spread so the fact that, that i've said in the answer there in my green pen that they are sort of evenly spread across and they're not all concentrated in one area they're not on the north or the south there's a reason we use there's some in the north there's some in the east the west and the central and there's one down in the south as well so they are quite quite evenly spread across india obviously most of them are inland there's only a few are on the coast um so most of them are inland and only two on the west you can see two right over on that west coast um, there's four up in the north, three in the east, uh, and there's a couple in the central. So the, the fewest actually we can pick out is that one, one lower one down by Bangalore there, right down in the south, there's only one in the south. So again, you can get a really good ex description of where there are, where these factories are. And there was a bit of a, of a multiple choice question at the bottom, which one of the statements is true? Again, if you struggle with this, make sure you go through it line by line and cross ones out. It can't be that one. So A, all the Coca-Cola factories are in the north. Clearly, if you look on the map, you can see that there's only four in the north and there are others there. So that can't be right. Most of the Coca-Cola factories are on the coast. Well, we actually said on the, on the last question that they're not. There's only those two over on the west coast that are actually on the coast themselves. Um, so that can't be right. And you've got C, there was only one Coca-Cola factory in the south of India near Bangalore. And that definitely seems right because you can just see one right down that bottom there. And and there are two, uh, four Coca-Cola factories in the west, and we we said that already. There's only two out on the west coast, so it can't be that one. So your answer there was C. So again, what you if you need to go back to YouTube, but hope you shouldn't then, because you should have remembered some of this. But if you do need to go back and rewatch the sec the last part of the GC pod, you can do. So what I want to do is is now look at what Coca-Cola have done so what is the problem with coca-cola how does it relate to our to our topic so coca-cola in india you, uh, the, I, the idea i want you to fill it in is what coca-cola did so what uh, what is the problem what's happened what is what were the impacts on the local people so these are the disadvantages what what problems did it cause for local people so try and be as specific as you can with this give numbers give data on the video what are the advantages of the tnc coca-cola in India, so why did India, although all those problems that we that you just probably hopefully listed on the last one, what were the actual advantages? Why did India um, want Coca-Cola set up there? So what were the benefits of it? And then really, what the solutions are? So what has the government done, and what has Coca-Cola done uh, to solve the problem? So they've come up with strategies in order to um, avoid the problem with water that's been created by these Coca-Cola factories. So you just need to fill in nice, simple description. Are in answer to those sort of four little statements at the start there and give yourself a bit of some notes once you've done that obviously go on to the next uh, slide and you can look and green pen so here's your here's your green pen answer all right so I've, I've filled it in for you if you notice I've tried to use some data in there so obviously Coca-Cola factory overuse using the water half a million liters of water from the from the ground every day 
causing the water table to fall by 23 meters so really quite specific information there you've got subsistence farming and if you remember subsistence farming is hopefully some of you have remembered this and said this already but subsistence farming is where farmers who grow food just for themselves or their family to eat they're not selling it to, they're not growing it to sell they're growing it um, just for their own so obviously that's in massively important for them to be able to access water because obviously if they can't grow crops that means they're going to starve or be or not have enough food obviously wells have been emptied and that's meant villagers have to walk up to five kilometers every day to access water so they have to carry that water back big advantages obviously was that jobs that were created and that money that the coca-cola then generated in taxes and support the injured economy and the solutions that they came up to solve the problem they were trying to replenish the ground to so put water back into into the ground use water harvesting schemes we have talked about this in the past water harvesting schemes and it did explain it a little bit on the gcd pod is where we collect rainwater and harvest water uh, from other areas and store it and then they can use that water so the, the, the easy water harvesting scheme that, that we tend to talk about is when uh, they use rainwater that runs off the roofs and they collect it in barrels and obviously they can then use that um, to water crops they could use that to do their washing uh, and if they can purify and it's clean enough they can use that then to drink and cook with as well coca-cola also pledged to be uh, water neutral by 2020 so obviously this was a few years ago that this was set up so by now they should be basically saving as much water as they use so recycling water and using it okay and, do, and some of the schemes above har harvesting water so that they are not basically using more water than they're putting back so that obviously hopefully solve that problem so hopefully you've got a really good understanding now of what happened in india with coca when coca-cola came in what were the problems how that affected local people uh, what the why it, the indian government allowed it to happen in the first place obviously because they wanted the coca-cola to come in set up factories to so create those jobs but also what solutions they've come up with to try and solve that problem Okay, I want you to have a go at the exam style question that we've got here. So explain two ways that an area can increase the amount of clean water that is available. Give an example. So just a couple of things I want to pick out. And I have, as you can see, that we've broken, we've um, bugged this question here. We've broken it down for you and deconstructed it nicely. So you've got the word explain as our command word. where We're talking about linking our points and making a sequence of sort of steps of things that have happened okay and there's some suggestions of how you can do that the two ways you've got three that you can choose from i actually pick two of those three the res the reservoirs and dams water transfer schemes and the desalination plants you've obviously got to try and make sure it's clear about how it actually increases the amount of clean water so we're not just saying this is what happens but how that actually increases the amount of of water and obviously that idea that we must be giving them more clean water that's free of pollution no salt so it's safe for people to drink and then we've got to give an example so for example if you pick the the dams and reservoirs the example that they use on Jesus epod was the three gorges dam in china where they've built a massive dam and it created this huge reservoir behind which has obviously increased the amount of water in that area obviously you can try and give a balanced argument as well so you can say what's good and what's bad about like in our notes we said what was the impacts what was the negatives and disadvantages and try and give some examples of sort of the positives as well so have a go at this the space on the next slide for you to fill in your answer um, and have a go remember it is six marks so you do need to make sure you've got two ways you need to give both not just one and you need to make sure we're really clearly explaining that answer as well. So on here, obviously pause the um, presentation. Keep You can obviously look back at the previous slide for those little help, helpful, tint, helpful hints um, as you look back and how we've uh, sort of broken down that question to help you set up your answer. Once you've done that, then obviously pause it now and have a go. And once you've done that, if you go on to the next slide, you can use the model answer to help you improve your answer. Okay, so here's a model answer for that for that question that we're talking about. 
So if we, what I've tried to do is I've, if we just focus on the top paragraph to start with, so I've just chosen one of those schemes, okay? So the one I'm, I've, I've highlighted sort of in bold, the, the, the key terms that you should be including. So obviously we've named the scheme, so the water transfer scheme. I've explained what that is, so it's the, uh, moving water from an area of surplus, where there's more water from an area of deficit. If you notice, I've used those two key terms in there, surplus and deficit. They go back to our first lesson. You now we're starting to link all our learning together. So you can clearly see that we're using the right terms. Rather than saying an area where there's lots of water to an area where there's less water, using those key terms is really important to get a good answer here. Obviously, then I've explained how that does, what, how that's done, so using pipes and tunnels, and you can see the next bit, supply water in an area that does not have enough water. So we're actually seeing that's the, that's the advantage here. We're now bringing water into an area that doesn't have enough. Then we've got a disadvantage. It's expensive to build, okay, and maintain these, these water pipes to transfer this water. Okay, so we've get clearly got the scheme, how it works, how it helps. We've got a disadvantage in there, because it's really expensive to maintain and water can easily be lost. And then we've got an example in there, the UK, Birmingham gets its water transferred from Wales. So we've got a nice simple pattern there. What's the scheme? How does it, how does it help? What are, what are the um, disadvantages, or if there are any? And then an example to support that. And then you can see the second paragraph is the same, but this time I've done it for desalinization. Okay, explain what that is, given sort of how that helps. Okay, then looked at the disadvantages, the excess of the salt going back into so damaging the ecosystem. And obviously the energy used uh, adds to the greenhouse effects of carbon dioxide and things given off in the process and different gases going into uh, the atmosphere causing climate change. And again, we've given an example at the end. It's then important that we try and sort of bring it together at the end. And I can see that both methods are significantly increased the amount of clean water available allowing local people to live healthier and better lives. So the aim of that is to obviously provide that access to clean drinking water, although there are advantages and disadvantages. And we've talked about sort of the disadvantage at the end again there with the high costs and the environmental energy. So it doesn't matter if you haven't done the two I've done, you obviously may have done one of them, and then you may have talked about reservoirs and dams as your second option, that's fine. But give yourself time now, go back through your answer, make sure you've done included at least one of those things that I've highlighted at the top there. So have you named the scheme? Have you said how it works? Have you talked about what the benefits are? Have you talked about any disadvantages and negatives? Okay, and have you given an example? That's what I'm looking for. If you haven't, go back and green pen now, add to your answer. Okay, and the same with the last paragraph. Make sure you've got a nice simple um, sort of summing up conclusion at the bottom.